Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Like we said, we have a very important conversation to discuss. And yes, somebody has decided to grace us with our presence. You know, when the, queens, the SWAT team yeah. has been when, 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 when queens are queens, you can't just help but give them the crown. So we're going to place it on your head this morning. Are you done, Queen? So sorry about you have to give us a royal wave oh, before you know, we yeah, accept your apology. Oh, thank you. I'm flipping the head that doesn't exist. <laughs> all right, all right. So, yeah. not to make light of what is going Absolutely. on right now, um, we really need to focus on the NSAS conversation. And guess what? It smells like victory for the Nigerian youth after presidential panel approves protesters' demands, hashtag 505. A new development is the Inspector General of Police has set up a new unit to replace the disbanded special anti robbery squad. Now SWAT. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Which is the special weapons and tactics team which will take over the duties of SARS. This is coming a little bit after 48 hours. The police unit was scrapped. The disbanded officers have been asked to report to Abuja for debriefing and psychological evaluation. Hmm. Hmm. Now joining us to speak and analyze these issues that currently plague Nigerian youth are Shegun Awusonya, known as Segalink, a Nigerian human rights activist. He's popularly known for convening the campaign against police brutality in Nigeria on social media as hashtag NSAS, which actually yielded results when the Muhammadu Buhari-led federal government of Nigeria announced a total overhaul of the Department of Special anti robbery Squad, popularly known as SARS. Also joining us is Dr. Ona Ehomu, who is the president of the Association of Industrial Security and Safety Operators of Nigeria and the Africa representative of the International Foundation for Protection Officers. Ehomu is the chairman of Trans World Security Systems Limited. In 2004, the Crime Reporters Association of Nigeria named Ehomu as the Private Security Chief of the Year. Fi um, thank you for joining us, sirs. How are you doing? Good. I'm fine. Thank you. Awesome. Thank nice you. Nice to see you, Dr. Ona. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, we, we would just like to know, what do you think about the youth right now and, and the protests going on against NSARS? We would just like to get your quick take before we even delve into the main conversation. Um, who are you directing your question? Um, to? Both of you, um, but um, you can go one at a time, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I need to correct something. And as usual, um, right. there is the NSAS Reform Police NG. It is not an against or for. It is a proposition that tends to identify the culture of impunity within the security forces, generally anyway. But we're focusing on the police system first, because right. police is the most critical institution in our polity. And they are the ones responsible for maintaining law and order in our society. Mm. And we have identified and traced impunity as in gross one that have been costing Nigerian lives for years to the tactical squads as led by SARS, that is special anti-robbery squad. There are other variants of this particular uh, right. uh, strike force. Are we saying that they, they are all bad? No. We're simply saying that it is very difficult for, uh, for people to be professional in a place where impunity governs the activities within that system. And then we're also saying after shutting down the impunity, in other words, ending SARS, we must transit to the end goal, which is the re total reformation of the Nigerian police. As you know, government will always outlive all of us. Government mm. can outmuzzle everybody. Mm. If you go to Borno, for example, they will be glad to tell you that man, the impact of SARS is something that they cannot even afford to think of not doing that, of doing without. But mm. of course, it's not the same story in, in the South because mm. of the impunity that governs their operations. Mm. So what exactly is responsible for this? Anything we do without legislation, it becomes a stopgap that can mm. be repealed by just anybody. Mm. The idea has the power to remove or to scrap any units that have been created in an ad hoc manner to address certain elements, mm. which is why we went for legislation. So the, pro the advocacy of three years now has now translated into a bill that has mm. turned into law, that has been signed into law, police trust fund deal, and police uh, reform bill, that's Police Act 2020. This act have addressed, a lot, both of the acts have addressed 
the long-term issue of lack of funding, paucity of funds, uh, uh, lack of welfare, so many other things, so that we, the, the police can be refocused for better. As of today, we have what they could do, a legal or a proper legal legislation for what has been passed. We have the proper appropriation based on uh, the, the police trust fund policy that has been there so that money can come in. Because today, 30% of the budget of the police are hardly released. Mm. How do you want to train these people? How do right. you have a, how do you hope to have a systemic reform? And also, while we're understanding from the government side and the police side, Nigerians have been failed a lot of times. Mm. They are the ones that are dying. And mm. if without political will, nothing will be done to the letter. After the bill has been passed, Nigerians need to be sure that it will be implemented. Mm. Right. Because we've had reforms, reforms, mm. reforms all the time, and nothing has happened, which is what justifies the taking to the street of citizens mm. within their own right. So it started as an organic mm. movement, you understand, and which yielded results because it shows the government that this is serious. Nigeria all right, Segaling, Segaling. We're ready to take to the street for as long as possible. Segaling, thank you so much for your world. take. At the same time, without standing against what, you know, uh, without doing what we're against ourselves. Thank you so much, Segaling. But we would like to get Dr. Um, Ona's take on this as well. Um, thank you very much for having me, sir. Um, I think it's, uh, it's been a very good um, uh, intervention by the youths, um, the protests, uh, articulation of uh, the views, um, getting uh, the 5.5 program uh, together uh, for the government to look at and uh, take action on. Uh, I think it has been an effective uh, protest uh, movement. And um, I think also that uh, the youth have conducted themselves uh, in a very uh, responsible manner, um, such that the protest has been devoid of uh, violence uh, and uh, devoid of uh, trying to burn down police stations or kill people or whatever. Uh, I think uh, the youth have been very well organized. Uh, in fact, this is a classic protest, which Nigeria should probably go out and teach other youths uh, in other parts of the world how mm. to uh, bring about change in society. Now, having said that, I think um, that the authorities have also responded very well. Uh, there's been um, uh, a listening ear. Uh, the president has spoken, the IG has taken action, and now they have changed the name of the, uh, of the uh, they've changed, they've brought in a new uh, anti-violent crime squad, uh, namely SWAT. Uh, and so I think uh, it's been win-win on both sides. But I think the Nigerians who are going to benefit from better policing services, mm. they are the biggest winners. Now, mm. I also think that the police has won because um, there are issues which uh, they've not been able to articulate with the mm. political leadership mm. have mm. come front and center. And now they are being heard uh, uh, the uh, president is now saying that they are going to be paid better. And uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Shegun has uh, uh, referred to the uh, police trust fund bill, uh, uh, the police trust fund itself, and then the police, the recent police act. Right. But I think beyond that, there's been a commitment, a direct commitment, which I heard the president make that uh, uh, policemen should be better remunerated. And wow. I think that's a, a big win for all of them because certainly if you reduce the things that are causing corruption, police corruption, which is what is driving a lot of the brutality that uh, we are observing, if you reduce those things that are causing police corruption, then certainly uh, we'll get better policing. Right, thank okay, you. We've, we've asked this question. I know even Ifeo Shuke has asked this question many times. Right now, I want to. Uh, my, my, my concern in my heart is with the protesters who are still out there, even as it's raining right now. But I wanted to find out, especially from maybe Sergei Link, who's a lot more connected to these protesters, is that when do you think we should stop? Like, what's that thing that would... Because it's a, it's a faceless protest. You know, like the Black Lives Matter, they had a founder that coined the term and coined the movement. It's not like that with this movement. This movement, we have a lot of um, people who are doing a lot that people are looking up to, but we don't have a particular face. So at the end of the day, 
whoever is affected or moved by SARS and wants to connect and, and serve this movement in whatever way has joined hands by protesting and going out there to, you know, be on ground to lock things up and all that. So I want the people to know, hearing from, from people like you with such authorities and information about this protest, is what are the signs that we can start to see that either say, yes, we're doing really well, because you guys have both mentioned that, you know, saying that there's a reformation is not enough, not enough for me either, because the trust issues are there. But what else can we look out for to say, okay, we can be coming down, guys, or maybe this thing might end on Friday, or like when, when we get this particular thing, then we'll be able to say, okay, you know, enough of house. the protest and all that, because lives are at stake. We're putting ourselves at risk. My heart is in my stomach every time I, I wake up because, you know, friends are out there and I'm, I'm worried that there'll be another news about something or someone, or I might be the next Oja B or something. So what is that thing that we can be looking out for, like I say, our measures to look at, to, to put in place that would say, okay, let's relax? Well, I think that um, you have seen, I don't think I've ever seen the government move this fast on anything. Mm. If you look at it very well, I'm sure uh, Dr. Honor will agree with me that when it comes to security issues, based on where we're coming from, the police itself is a very, very sensitive institution, close to the heart of the president. That is a monopoly of violence for the government. And mm. the only way to reform is to whittle down the power of the police and make them accountable. They have never been accountable. So when you say apart from the bill, the bill is everything. Mm. Without mm. legislation, you have nothing. Only sure. promises, which can be changed tomorrow. So with the bill, we have police being uh, uh, repositioned for accountability and transparency. You have policing, uh, the police being uh, repositioned to obey fundamental human rights of the people and the rule of law according to the African Charter and according to all the charters that Nigeria has been part of. And you also have policing now open to the public and not for critical, uh, corporate, uh, uh, critical organizations and uh, CSOs, civil society organizations, to be part of you know, the reform process and the monitoring process of the activities of the police. I don't think it gets transparent more than this. And with that already, you can see within the within 48 hours of that meeting held by the National Human Rights Commission and also stakeholders within the system, you see how many things that have been put in place. Mm. The government did not cherry pick what to accept. They looked at all the, remember, apart from the five by five, five for five, that it was extracted from the uh, the uh, NSAS reform police NG movement. Remember, there are two things happening here. There is a structured new movement with a face. You cannot deal with a critical institution like policing incognito. It doesn't happen that way because yeah. they don't know who is sponsoring it. There are other people with other ideas. They too can come out and block the road and give government mandates. What happens then? So this is a law free. We're in a society that is governed by law. So mm. we're saying the things that you need to see that you can tell that government has heard you is the rate at which, the speed at which the president himself came out to give, to give an order. Number one, the president doesn't need to give an order to scrap SARS. It is the an IG that created SARS as an ad hoc program. You understand? And it is 28 years old. Mm. The society has been complicated since then. So it is better for us to review and re re envision this particular, we cannot do without tactical squad anyways. Um, we need okay. them because the police are not as equipped to engage uh, um, violent crime like they are. But again, do we give a madman or do we give somebody mm. who is emotionally uh, uh, disturbed a gun mm. and do we, uh, the, uh, without food in his stomach, without a future for him, without self-actualization? That is what we are saying that needs to be corrected. Police are victims of these systems themselves. Mm. And we are saying we are, we too, we are tired of dying. So we must meet ourselves somewhere. And what the organization does, what Social Intervention Advocacy Foundation, the people that brought about the NSAS Reform Police and the movement that now escalated into people coming to add their own voice to it to create an organic protest, mm. you know, is that we want to protect our citizens mm. from harm and sure. we must not expose them to harm. We begin to expose them to harm when they stay too long outside after government have kept their promise. Mm. You understand? So now that they have released all the people who have been incarcerated, they are ready to compensate the families of those who have lost uh, their words and those who even lost their, uh, their children during this protest. And also they have agreed to give psychological e examination to every single person within the police, not just the SARS. And also they have, uh, they have begun to review the salaries of the police and several other things and their operations. I think we need to begin to give peace a chance. I'm not saying take off the street. Oh. I'm not saying that they, they have done everything. Some of these promises, uh, some of these uh, demands are not something that can happen immediately. But okay. the process is already in um, place. Hi, As Sega. I was speaking, the, com the committees have been, you know, put in by in the next three days now, they will have their first meeting and they'll be able to set some things out so that okay. they can begin to roll out. These are signs of seriousness. And um, from hi, the white Sega, paper they... that have been generated from the presidential panel set up by the acting president before, we also have some terms of that you have not even demanded that will be put in place that will make you proud of the Nigerian policy. But what am I saying? 
We are just a bridge linking the people to the government as an organization. We are not saying you are right, you are wrong, they are, they are wicked, they are bad. But we are also letting governments feel the real pulse on this. Hello, sir. Why do people also see what government is doing? That's why the distrust. We understand, but we need to win trust. Nigeria Thank you. belongs to all Thank of us. Thank you, Sega. Sega. Will let, always let LC proceed with our next question. Okay, so you, my Sega. question is um, going to be pretty simple. I think it's, a, it's one of the demands that is not exactly in the 5 for 5, but I've seen people echo it on social media. And it is to say that with the number of lives and the chaos that we've seen in the Nigeria police force, that it is fair for the Inspector General, General of Police to resign. So what would you say to that call? And is it too much for anyone to ask? My question now goes to both of you. And since um, Sega has been speaking, maybe um, Dr. Tosh should start first. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, I think um, the, uh, <laughs> certainly there's um, a, a failing in policing, as we have seen, uh, if there are substantial human rights abuses which uh, have culminated in um, uh, this wide range citizens' protest, then perhaps uh, we can adjudge that the police uh, has uh, not met uh, some of the expectations of uh, society. Now, um, you, that is further compounded by, you know, increasing crime and criminality, armed robberies, kidnappings. Uh, I think just yesterday or day before yesterday, they kidnapped. Um, eight people in a Kujie council mm. in uh, Abuja. So I think if you look at those objective measures of performance, we'll say that there is problem with uh, policing uh, in the country. But uh, I, I, don't, um, uh, <laughs> I don't subscribe to the concept that, oh, the IG must resign. Uh, actually, if anything, this IG appears to be uh, a quite a responsive IG. After all, you've done, uh, I mean, uh, the youths have done NSAS movement in uh, 2017, 2018. Uh, what did they get in 2018? They got the change of uh, nomenclature. They, they changed the name from SARS to F SARS and, mm -hmm. uh, and see how the SARS that were killing people on the streets. So I think um, this IG, um, he, if you look at, there are many ways, they, uh, there are many ways to measure executive performance of uh, the police agency. And, um, and those most of those measures way in favor of this uh, IG. I mean, certainly there are many people in the police agency who can act as IG, but at least this devil I know is better than some angel that I really don't know yet. So okay. I think uh, that call is perhaps going because you didn't appoint him, so why should you uh, Why should you sack him? He has somebody that appointed him. You've uh, stated your claims. The claims are being addressed. Uh, some have already been addressed, and uh, I think right. you should give that executive space to work. Uh, All right, doctor. There's too much emotion, uh, uh, you know, bandied, being bandied around here, and we ought to really calm things down on again. Aomo, on Aomo, we All need right. to go on a break shortly, but this conversation will continue. So, Tea Time, we'll be right back after the short break. Stay with us.